This video of mine is going to be a short video on this video right here. It's an interview with Joe DeGeneva on the Bar Durham investigation and also a little bit about Mike Rogers. So stick with me. I'll be back in a minute. Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles and this is going to be a real quick one because what I want you to do is go to this video and watch the whole thing. It's about 15 minutes long. I'm going to give you a couple clips here, but I really, you know, I can't do the whole thing for fair use. That's a little too much, but I can do a little clip here and some commentary and then another clip and commentary and that'll work out just fine. But it's really a good clip and it's an interview with uh, DeGenova on this whole Durham investigation thing that I think is really important for where we're at right now and I hope pretty soon that we're going to have something come from it. Unfortunately I have heard that John Solomon has now decided to kind of walk back his idea that he was putting out there that there would be some indictment this week so who knows they keep getting pushed back but if that means that they're going to solidify the case against other people and make sure that those guys don't get off. I guess it's worth it. It's just very trying for us and we're all chomping at the bit for that first indictment. So anyway, let me play this little clip for you and then I'll come back and talk about it just a tad. Uh, so transparency, which I would think is great, but yet Adam Schiff is very angry and he's come out quite vocally against Rick Grinnell. What's Adam Schiff afraid of? Well, Adam Schiff is afraid of honesty. Uh, remember, from the beginning of this entire charade, he has been lying to the American people from the perch of either his ranking minority member on the Intelligence Committee when the Republicans were in charge or as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. And what he has done is consistent with the conduct of Comey, Clapper, Brennan, and McCabe, he has put out literally, literally, and this is very important to understand, false information, knowing that it was false. Uh, you will recall the famous incidents in which Nunes put out a report, which has now proven to be 100% correct about illegal conduct by FBI and CIA officials, and that uh, Schiff refuted that publicly with statements saying that everything that Nunes put out was false, knowing all along that everything that Nunes was saying was true. I know this is Kafkaesque, and saying it almost sounds unbelievable, but what Schiff is afraid of is that more people inside the intelligence community who are going to be displaced by Grinnell are going to be forced to, or may have already sp spoken with John Durham. What Schiff is doing is he's preparing help for potential defendants for jury pools in the District of Columbia. In other words, he's trying to dirty up jury pool pools to make them think that whatever Durham is going to do is politically motivated. So we have a rather bizarre, uh, horrible, horrible dance going on. Adam Schiff is really one of the most evil and disgusting human beings ever put on the face of the earth. <laughs> I agree with them. Definitely. Oh my goodness. And this is the reason that Schiff is going to be in deep, deep do pretty soon. Maybe he's going to be the first one. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But the whole thing is, did you notice he said knowingly? Yeah, Schiff knew that when he corrected Nunez's memo, when he put out his little bogus fairy tale one, that he was lying. He knew he was lying. And yet he did it anyway. That right there is just so convicting. I mean, this guy is so guilty. It should be nothing at all to put together a case against him. He's lied. He's leaked. He's just done everything. And the idea that he is one of the gang of eight should really scare all Americans. That this is the quality of person that we have in that position. Only those eight, you know, four from the House and four from the Senate, four from each party, get to see those classified documents on behalf of all the rest of Congress. So it should really scare us that he has that much power. And of course, he's overseeing all of the intelligence agencies. 
yeah, it's really something kind of sobering when we think about that. So anyway, I wanted to go on and let you hear this next clip. So here we go. Well, we know that Mike Rogers, the former head of the National Security Agency, the great admiral who blew the whistle yes. uh, on to the president of the United States about how he was being spied on. Um, we know that Rogers has met with the Durham regularly, we are told, regularly in an effort to explain uh, NSA activities and the violation of NSA rules by Susan Rice and others. Uh, what, one of the things we know is that um, there has been grand jury testimony. There's no doubt about that. And he's not doing that to write a report. And I want to underscore for our WMAL listeners that what Bill Barr said the other day was very important. He said Durham is not there to write a report. He may end up writing a report as part of his activities, but he is there to bring charges. And that's what he's doing. So my guess is he's not going to bring stuff that's weaselly. Uh, I'm expecting a broad conspiracy charge, which will be against uh, Brennan and others to deny the president and us people associated with the president, including Carter Page, of their civil rights, right. but also a huge conspiracy count to defraud the United States government of the faithful servants of its employees. Yep, a broad conspiracy charge. That's what I hope is going to happen, too. And, of course, he mentions the NSA because, really, if you haven't seen that video of mine, you might want to watch it because it deals with the whole situation with these illegal queries that were going on. The Obama administration, they were putting queries into the NSA database illegally. They did not have the authorization to do that. And there were only two people, as I understand it, that were eligible to authorize it. The first one was Mike Rogers, who was at the time the director of the NSA. And the other one was the AG, who at this time was Loretta Lynch. So I think that this is going to be very, very bad for Loretta Lynch. And I think Mike Rogers has been testifying, like he said, a lot. He's been putting out a lot of information. And when you talk about the person who knows where the bodies are buried, I kind of think Rogers knows because he's been part of all of this. And this type of thing that was going on was something that he discovered, and he's the one that exposed it. So let me go on and get one more clip for you here. It's incredible. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. And and the reason, one of the reasons I brought up Admiral Mike Rogers, who I'm glad you've brought up so many times, Joe, on our show, because I think Great hero. Uh, the people Great hero. who are doing the right thing deserve to get credit for that. Um, I, I just see these headlines that you ref that you're referencing that Mike Rogers has been cooperating extensively with John Durham to help him in yes. his investigation. And also that intelligence community assessment that I cited at the top here. Remember, when everyone else came out and said that there's no question, high degree of confidence, Russia was trying to get Trump elected. The only agency to dispute that degree of confidence was the National Security Agency, led by Admiral Mike Rogers, who said they did not have the same confidence as John Brennan and James Clapper. That's a big deal, and I'm looking forward to the day that Admiral Mike Rogers speaks out in public, maybe even here on this show. I'd love to have him for an interview on what really went down during the Obama administration. He's a great American, and he is really the hero of this story. And it's it's an it's, and as I've said before, every evil person in this story is a lawyer or a political operative. The only hero in this story, or an FBI agent, those corrupt FBI agents like Pienka and Suma, uh, Soma, and all these other people. Yeah, Mike Rogers stood up. As a, as a great American, and he deserves the Medal of Freedom from this president at the appropriate time. And I am all for that. I hope he does get that Medal of Honor. He deserves it. He is definitely a hero. I have a video on that. So applause to Mike Rogers and good job to Geneva because he really lays it out there. The whole clip is really good. So, you know, I left out a lot of it. Go back and there's more information that's very important 
they cover uh, how they determine where it can be tried. And unfortunately, because most of it took place in D.C., probably the grand jury was impaneled in D.C., However, because it involves the CIA, that is Langley, and so that could shift it a little bit, maybe. But who knows? Anyway, the whole clip's well worth watching. Please go see it. I've left the link down below for you, and I just encourage you to see it because it's a good video and uh, has a lot of good information in it, and we hope that Durham is going to come to a conclusion really fast. <laughs> I think he will sometime in the summer. I don't know exactly when, but when he's got his case built, he will just go ahead and prosecute. The indictments will fly because that's what he's doing. He's not going to write a report. He's going to be indicting people. So there you go. That's what I've got for you on this one. And I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later. Mm -hmm.